How many times have you tried to create a document in Microsoft Word or any word processor that looks like this? And it took you hours upon hours, lots of hair pulling and maybe some cursing to get it done. Well, you may be going about it just the wrong way because we're using our word processor as a typewriter instead of as a word processor. So today I'm going to teach you how to use what's called tables in Microsoft Word. It works the same in all other word processors as instead of using columns to create this kind of a document. The first thing to do when creating a table is map out how many columns of information that you want because it's much easier to know the exact number of columns before you start because it makes formatting a lot simpler down the road. Rows can be added very simply as you'll see in a moment but plan out your column. In our particular case we wanted a column for name we wanted a column for address and a column for phone number, so three different columns. So we're going to click Table from the menus, Insert Table. Then it's going to ask me, how many columns do I want? I'll type three. How many rows do you want? I'll put, we'll put three here as well, and then we'll click OK. Now you get a grid with lines on it that gives you exactly what your parameters are for typing. The neat thing about tables is these are exactly spaced the way you want them. You can adjust them later, but they can also grow. Type in our first name here. Then we push tab on the keyboard. We're going to type in the second bit of information here. And we'll push tab again. Gets me to the third column. And then we'll type in our information the third column. Now, to get from our last column to the next row, we simply push tab on the keyboard to reach the second row and start typing again. So we'll type that in. Type. I'll push tab on my keyboard to get to the middle column. Type in the second bit of information column. Tab from the second column to get to the third column. Type in our phone number and boom we are done. Okay I've typed in the last bit of information here in our last row. If I decide I want a fourth row of information when I'm in this third column I can simply push tab again and I immediately get another empty row where I can type. If I don't want that I can push undo and get rid of that particular row or if I want to get rid of a row I can come out into the margin here on the left click one time go up to tables delete row and it disappears. Now if I want to insert a row maybe I want to put titles above these columns I can click anywhere in the first row click table from the menus, insert a row above, because I want to go above this particular area. And it gives me another row. So now I can type the titles for our form. And now we can begin to edit the table. First thing a lot of people may not want to have is the lines. So if you want to get rid of the lines, you have to click in anywhere inside your table. Make sure you're in one of the cells. Each one of these boxes is called a cell. I'll click table, select table, then I'm going to go to format, borders, and I'm going to tell it I don't want any borders, none. Click none, click OK, and there is my borderless table. Now it looks like I still have borders, but those are simply placeholders for us so we know where our table is and where the information is going to be printed once we print it but these little gray lines that you see will not print. Now I can go about formatting the table. First I want to highlight this first row. So I'm going to click again in the column right next to the row. It highlights the entire row and I can change the font, the justification of the text to make a headline there. And then I decided that these addresses are too close together here so I'm going to click right next to the last line of my address and hit enter one time so you can see that the row will grow and give me a little more room between my cells. So let's click print preview and see what this looks like. There we are. This is what the final product looks like in our print preview. One thing we might want to do is add some more separation between our actual form and the headlines that we've made and I can do that very easily with tables. I'm going to go ahead and select again this first row. We're going to go back to format again from the menus, borders, 
and this time I want to put a border at the bottom, I want to put a line across the bottom of that row. So I'm going to click one time here in the diagram showing me which areas I can place a border and make that border a little bit thicker under here under the width and click OK. Now let's hit print preview again and this is what we end up with. So quick and dirty we've made a very simple no cursing required version of a columns that we would do on a typewriter but much much nicer. Next week we'll feature part two of how to use tables to create even more unique and customized tables.